Thank you, everybody. So this particular research paper is called Physics Inspired Energy Transition Neural Network for Sequence Learning. Uh, it's an interesting research paper overall. Uh, their goal is to create a physics inspired energy transition neural network, and which they call a PETNN. Their method for this is very straightforward overall, breaking it down, understanding exactly what is going on within this research paper. So they take an RNN model or recurrent neural networks is, is the basis for these networks. Um, and then within RNNs, the one of the problems with RNNs, so there's a few problems with R RNNs overall, like why they like um, are different than transformers and why they don't take off as much as transformers to me in real world terms it's um the it's it ties to this memory issue right and then so they have a uh like a memory issue where it's uh they have like a forget like a they like um it's hard for them to like uh remember information like pass information and then uh, like um playing around with these models it's very obvious right so they have a context window and then whatever that context window is if you talk to the model within that context window it's amazing like it's awesome like better than transformers uh and then like as soon as you, like the second that you get outside of that to that context window it's just like like nothing ever happened right like it's just i don't know <laughs> like 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 that conversation didn't exist and and none of it took place uh it's really weird overall right but um Within that, the, the, like, kind of the, the basis for that is these, so, and the basis for AI overall, um, is uh, sigmoid functions and sigmoid gates, right? And then, so, um, the sigmoid function is just like this S curve. You've probably seen it a lot in a lot of different equations overall or the activation function, right? It, it, uh, essentially it's a linear function that creates nonlinearity. Um, and then, so it's kind of the bridge between linearity and nonlinearity. And then, so it's how you can always get, um, a nonlinear output, even with a linear input, right? Which is what AI models do. <laughs> you have an input uh, and then a hidden state, and then you get an output and a hidden state because of the sigmoid functions and the, the that are are um, and the linear transformations uh, that are within the model, right? Exactly like what we're seeing within these diagrams that occur here. But so within that sigmoid function, it's generally uh, like. Um, weighted by and, and and controlled by gates by like logic gates that are either on or off uh and then so within this particular model and this particular architecture this petnn they change it from gates and then they allow the model full control over the process of um those gates overall <laughs> what the what the what the gates are right the the essentially this they give the model control over the sigmoid function and then how do they do that? Uh, they do that via an interesting process, right? Um, so this observation inspired the core idea of PETNN, i.e. using energy as the cell state for upgrades. To address this, we propose a novel memory mechanism in PETNN. Unlike LSTM, which relies on predefined memory and forget gates, PETNN empowers the neurons to autonomously determine what information to learn and update based on the energy state, a process we refer to as the self-selective information mixing method. This approach offers two key advantages. First, it allows neurons to dynamically control the proportion of information updates. Second, it enables neurons to determine and decide the storage duration of relevant information. So bottom line is, is that they uh, propose these neuron gates for the model to be able to uh, control itself. Uh, and then like, uh, so it has a ground state and an excited state and via energy control. And so energy, it's, you know, energy conservation, um, all physics inspired, right? Like, uh, which is why um, it's a physics inspired model. Uh, and then, so here's the architecture uh, as well. It's very straightforward, right? And then, so within this as well, um, it's inherently based off of time steps and time decay. Um, and then so that's part of the, the physics inspired uh, architecture and structure there as well. Um, and then they just for the rest of the paper uh, here uh, for like the rest, like the 10 pages they lay out their experiments, the model benchmarks performance uh, and then their their references and then like a kind of like in the appendix they give like some pseudocode and and um, some stuff like that. Right. And so I'm able to take the pseudocode what they put together and then so let's 
take a look at what this model looks like, right, <laughs> in actual practice. Uh, and then so uh, here's their, I call it a class of a PETNN. And then so you have your weight matrices, your biases, typically like it's, you know, pretty standard R RNN stuff. Um, and then um, I had some troubles here with uh, like regards towards uh, like um, some of the maths. So I'd have run, th run this through and fix it out. Uh, this is the bias function. Hidden layers. And then so here's we have our uh, input dimensions of 10, hidden dimensions of 20, uh, and then the cell dimension here of one. Uh, and then this is uh, where we create and then just I'm just essentially like just printing out the shape of the model um, in this instance. Uh, and then so overall, again, it's it's a RNN model that is uh, that self gates itself. So it, it has control over um, its kind of internal workings via an energy function um, within this. Right. And I guess. Um, a lot of people like uh, I have conversations around energy <laughs> uh, when it comes to digital spaces within this, right? So first of all, like you're defining the energy within the energy within these spaces, but uh, energy is operating within these digital spaces via physics, right? That, that's kind of the bottom line and, and why you're utilizing physics within this. And then so within that, like within these digital spaces, um, energy still follows like uh, laws of conservation and things like that, right? Like like a, a thermal. The, the laws of thermodynamics, etc. <laughs> There's uh, no escaping physics, uh, even in digital spaces. Um, and then so within that, like you don't necessarily have to define um, the behavior of energy uh, in the digital space. You just have to define the energy within the, the digital space. And that's kind of how you go about that. Right. Um, and then like uh, the next question that that brings up for people oftentimes for me is like, how exactly does that work within digital spaces and defining it? And then to me, uh, how it works overall and, and how I play around with, <laughs> with these things within these spaces is is that so um, essentially what we're doing in this instance is that we're, we're creating a, um, a closed network of um, arithmetic of math right uh, at the end of the day that's what we're doing we're creating a model made out of math and it's a closed model it's a closed environment uh, the environment the, the environment is the latent space that is created via this right and then so the latent space is uh, where all of this is taking place uh, within this and the latent space is mathematical and algebraic equations mixed with the sigmoid function which makes them like geometric functions which uh, according to other research that I've shown and proven out on on this channel, uh, algebraic functions have geometric properties inherently. And then so geometric properties within these digital spaces gives them some sort of like the, the uh, a geometric property, which any sort of geometric property whatsoever, digital or physical, is subject to laws of physics. It's just the laws of physics overall, right? Um, and then so that's kind of what they're going off of and, and playing around with uh, within these models. And that's like, what well, I mean, that that's what they're playing with within this, right? Um, and so just laying out the logic behind it, whether or not you agree with the logic or that logic and, and this physics inspired logic, that's the logic behind how these models are built, right? And and um, they do stuff. So it's obviously got to, it's not like just made up voodoo, right? Um, and then within that, like I can show you. So the next step is, is so this first step is just, you know, uh, training the model and, and, and outputting the shape. And then let's actually, I mean, are just outputting the shape without training. And then so let's actually give it a, a, a training mechanism. And then in this instance, I'm just going to train, uh, I wanted to train like one parameter, right? So it's like one singular parameter uh, of this model is what this uh, training sequence does, but it's it, it gives you the, the um, full training sequence within this. And then so within the training sequence, uh, that's where you get and, and you introduce stochastic gradient descent, back propagation, et cetera. That's how I'm training this model out. Um, I don't know. I mean, I could train in other ways, but that's how I choose to do it. So I have a forward and a backward pass uh, for my training. Uh, and then I utilize the stochastic gradient descent to measure and calculate the loss. Uh, and then within that, I can I see that there is a loss after uh, one epoch of training one parameter <laughs> of the model, which is uh, exactly what I wanted to test for, right? And then so just some notes on the full training here, like this isn't anywhere near a full training. Uh, you would want to uh, utilize like Atom Optimizer or something like that with regards towards uh, SGD uh, and then just outlining and, and pinpointing all of those things uh, and highlighting that I would utilize essentially overall a, a standard SG, like standard stochastic gradient descent based uh, training process for training this 
physics inspired energy transition neural network, which is uh, based off of a RNN architecture. So like the base architecture of this is RNNs. They are doing some novel things to RNNs overall. So if you are a fan of RNNs, uh, this is a good paper for you overall. If you think that RNNs are poo poo, you're probably gonna think that this model is poo poo. Uh, and uh, that's kind of uh, overall uh, how I would uh, rank this paper and what this model that we're looking at. I'll leave a link to both the uh, research paper here uh, as well as the collab notebook. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.